we are now going to look at a topic called routing. So let's first understand this notion of page composition, right? Now in the basic original definition of the web, so to say, all pages that are displayed on the browser are HTML that comes from a server, right? Of course, there might be some images that get loaded from somewhere else, but ultimately the HTML from the server is what defines what a page looks like. Now, nowadays with view like frameworks, right? you are trying to change the way that a page is constructed, right? It's no longer just sort of fetching HTML from a server and rendering it. You are trying to break the page up into different components and different parts of an app can actually correspond to different components, right? So in fact, the way that you would think about the app and the way that you would sort of create the app would probably be by defining components rather than creating individual HTML pages, right? So, it's now an application, not just a sequence of pages that you are visiting one by one, okay? So now in this context, right, we have this notion where we can say that rather than looking at a link or, uh, you know, the navigation from one page to another being something that triggers a re-rendering of the page, fetching something from the server and rendering the page again, it might just mean rendering a new component, okay? So is there a way by which we can basically point to that and say, okay, look, just go and modify a component or display a new component, okay? So view provides something called view router, which is used precisely for this, okay? What it says is that rather than your links, your clickable links or your navigation explicitly going and hitting the server each time, it could be handled internally on the browser side, right? By routing to different components. An example, can be seen over here, right? We have this app which is defined within this div. It has some components that are fairly, you know, standard stuff, right? I mean, all of this is just the basics that you have over here. But you will notice these two new entries, right? Something called router link, okay? And basically what it says is the router link to equal to slash foo, you know, and it shows up as go to foo. This would be exactly like a A tag, okay? So as you can see, router link will be rendered as an A tag by default, okay? Now, what does that mean? That if it was rendered as an A tag, it would basically be A href equal to slash foo, go to foo, which means what you would see on the screen would be go to foo, but in the color and probably with the underlining that shows that it's a link, right? And you can click on it. Normally, when you click on the link, what happens? It should go and issue a new request to the server, get slash foo. Okay, what happens in the case of the view router, we'll get to that in a moment. Now, the point is router link is not something that is standard HTML. So we need some other way by which it can actually get displayed. And what happens, how that happens is that you actually have another component called a router view component that in turn actually shows whichever component is going to get rendered by clicking on the link that you have. Okay. So what we have in other words is this part up here, this paragraph, which act will actually show us these router links that we can click. But anytime I go and click on a router link, it is not handled by the ahref and therefore it does not trigger a request to the server. Instead, it goes and updates this router view component, okay? So whatever component is matched by the present route, okay, is, go is what is going to get rendered in this router view which means that we need this notion of what is the present route to be displayed, okay? Which means that there has to be some new sort of object, which is actually speaking part of the state of the system, right? But rather than putting it into a state management system such as Vuex, what we do is we take this and treat it separately as a route management component, okay? So whatever you have in that route manager, the route, the present route, is what is going to get displayed in the router view, okay? What we can do then is, you know, this const foo, template, uh, this and so on, these are basically components, right? And what we do is we specify a set of root paths, right? So slash foo corresponds to component foo, slash bar corresponds to component bar, right? Going back and thinking about what we have over here, effectively what it seems to indicate is that what goes in here should be either the foo component or the bar component, right? 
how exactly is that handled this new router that we have over here right takes in these routes and says that anytime you click on slash foo use component foo in the router view okay and similarly if you click on slash bar use the component bar in the router view okay one minor note over here as you can see this you know you can this is essentially using some kind of new javascript notation where inside an object right you have the curly braces just giving roots is equivalent to the term roots colon roots okay so it's basically saying that the router dot roots right which is the internal term inside this object is equal to the roots that you are passing in as the variable from outside okay so you are specifying them to be the same the same thing is again used over here when you are creating the view app itself right you just specify router and in this case yeah you know you explicitly dollar mount it as hash app you could also have given it as element app instead and you know that would also have worked okay so ultimately what is the point of all of this your html page has now been changed in such a way that you have a specific router view that will display the component that's been selected how do you know which component is selected there is a router which keeps track of which is the current route and that router is associated with your view app okay and depending on which is the currently selected route in your router either one of these components will get displayed into the router view okay so effectively what you are doing is you are sort of hijacking the entire process by which page rendering happens and saying that rather than going and you know when a click on a link happens rather than going and triggering something which is a fetch from the server you will first see if it can be handled directly internally right as part of displaying a new component in the router view okay just replace that part of the page alone with a new component okay now that effectively the nice thing about it is you know you are not re-rendering the whole page you are just rendering a component and the component could might, might already have been preloaded. okay so it could be more efficient potentially so the advantage is you know clickable links to transition between components you can basically display any component ra rather than going and fetching new pages okay now the clicks are handled by the client side javascript there's no need to hit the server okay now that's both good and bad right because the server now doesn't know that you are actually navigating between different parts of a page now from the user experience point of view the nice thing is you are sort of replacing parts of an existing page without refreshing the whole page it's possible to make that smoother and look more like a regular application right a desktop application than something which you know it makes it very clear that every time you click on something it goes back fetches something from the server and updates the whole page okay you can also have this notion of dynamic routes using the same view router where over here just like in python flask right you would specify a path as user and give this colon notation to say id is now a variable how is that variable passed into the component user it is available as roots params dot id in this case okay not as something which is a property but it can be accessed within this user component right using the variable roots params and id in this case it was defined as id therefore it shows up as id over here okay so dynamic routes can also be specified you could have different users being uh, shown in this way for example okay now that potentially has an impact on the reactivity of the system right what happens is that let's say i'm navigating from slash user slash one to slash user slash two what view would normally try to do is to reuse the same component okay now it may or may not it depends on how some of the internal things are done and what exactly it is that you are doing internally it may not trigger all the reactive updates that you would like to see on the screen okay so to ensure that this gets updated and that even you know when you go from user 1 to user 2 it's effectively a new component display that i want to have you could have something which you know you watch install a watcher right the regular view watcher on the route to and from so in other words you say that when you are navigating to some particular link right or you could even check whether it's coming from some particular link but anytime that you are going to a user slash something you could basically say look if the 
to root matches user slash something, maybe go back and re-render the entire component, a force update or something like that. Right? You could have that kind of behavior being done just by watching a particular root change. Okay. So there are a number of other features that I'm not getting into. You could have nested roots where you have a router view itself inside a component. So within one component, I could have multiple router views that, or rather I could have another router view that selects between child components. Okay. You can have named roots that make it easier for readability and maintainability and named views that allow you to associate multiple components with different router views by name. Okay. And finally, there's one interesting variant over here, which is called HTML5 history mode, right? What that allows you to do is when you think about it, you know, you are used to navigating in a browser where every time you click on a link, the previous link is always stored in the history of the browser, which is why there is a back button. You can go back to previous pages that you were on. But the moment that I hijack this by putting in a router, right, it means that anything that I click on is going to be handled by the router and not by the browser itself. In other words, it's not going to go into the history of the browser. I can't use back button to go backwards. But there is an API for that, right? And the router view sort of allows you to modify, use that API in order to modify the browser history and give you the behavior that you would normally expect, right? Or alternatively, you could decide that, you know, you want it to behave in a different way. When you click the back button, it actually behaves differently from what you would normally expect. But, you know, that's sort of, generally speaking, that's frowned upon. You don't want to change the behavior of the system for the end user, right? Modifying the browser history can be done. It can also lead to people getting quite upset with the way that you have designed a page. So don't do it unless you know that it's actually useful for a specific reason. So, you know, the bottom line is why do we use a router, right? It essentially allows us to handle routes or new links in JavaScript, okay? These routes are now associated with components rather than individual HTML pages, which means that you can now think about when you are developing a web application, the navigation inside the application can all be directed at different components, right? You have different components that constitute a big application and the navigation, which one gets shown on the screen can all be handled internally in JavaScript and updates can just be retrieved from the server on demand, okay? All of this, when you put it together, gives us a very interesting notion of something called a single page application where all the navigation is essentially handled internally and only the parts that need to be updated on the page are going to be fetched from the server. 